Hello and welcome to Digging Documents, Episode 4. My name is Alicia Stella and today we are digging into several patents from Universal. Uh, These are things that are either parts of ride systems or just one little addition that can help out a ride system. So I wanted to kind of just answer some questions. Like when I first see a patent, I'm like, oh, well, you know, will this help Mario Kart be more realistic? Or, you know, will this carry? Actually, you know what? Let's start with the carousel. This is called Carousel Ride Systems and Methods, and I've talked about it recently on the podcast, the Park Stop podcast, and I've talked about it recently in a video about Epic Universe because there's a rumor that Epic Universe will get a carousel, and here is a patent for a carousel. And the main, like, reason for this patent is the way that the ride system can lift all of the seats at once or bring them down all at once in addition to having them go up and down like the carousel when it's moving and that can help with uh loading and unloading and that's interesting and it's worth patenting and i think that's great however what in the world is going on in this image and that's pretty much my question because like all these images i get it okay it's going up and down it's it, you sit on seats and it's a carousel and it moves like a carousel and then you get to this oh here's the whole hydraulic lift going up and down to make them all level very cool stuff it gets very specific but what is with this image so I kind of just wanted to see if there was anything else to this before I continue to keep mentioning it in videos and articles I wanted to see if there's anything else to learn The overall says figure 10 is a perspective view of the shuttle assembly of figure six in accordance with an embodiment of the present disclosure. Okay, so it's just a close up view of the doohickeys. Figure six is a side view of an embodiment of a carousel ride system, 100, oh, that's just all of it, that includes a lift system, 102, Uh, which is the top part here, having a shuttle assembly, 104, example, movable core. As shown, the carousel ride system also includes multiple seats for riders. In the illustrated embodiment, the lift system is in a load-unload position in which the shuttle assembly is centered relative to the rotatable platform. And then the multiple seats of the carousel ride system may be at the same vertical height relative to the rotatable platform. So yes, uh, it seems that this entire patent is just describing a normal carousel that also can level all of the different seats to the same level. So if I go back, let's see figure one. Figure one is a perspective view of an embodiment of a carousel ride system that includes a lift system having one or more an- annular tracks. Ah, I see. So here, this see-through, this is the floor of the thing right here. This is all hidden underneath, so we don't know how it goes up and down. We just see it go up and down. Here's the actual floor. And then here's the floor here, and everything gets leveled out. Like this comes down or this goes up and it levels everything out. So that really is all this patent is for. But what is with these circle things? Is this just a weird angle on the circle things? Like this one's not on a stick. It's on a stick and it's sticking out. This this image is so bewildering to me. And they made it their main image. So this is just a very fancy view of this. And these round things, I guess, are pulleys. 122 says it's a pulley. And there you go. That's a 122 right there. So it's a pulley. So that solves that. Figure 10 is just a perspective view of a bunch of pulleys. This is not the entire carousel. This is something like hidden in the undercarriage down here below where you actually would see. So just a bunch of pulleys. Despite it looking 
extravagant. Like in my mind, I was like, this is a wacky carousel. What What is going on here? It's it's just pulleys. There's still a lot to discover about what a carousel could be from Universal, but we're not going to learn it from this patent. And the next patent I want to look at is called Dynamic Covergence Adjustment in Augmented Reality Headsets. Uh, Universal's patented like a dozen or so, maybe more augmented reality specific patents uh, over the years, especially leading up to the opening of Mario Kart. And the newer ones are getting more specific on how to improve the way you perceive the augmented images over reality. What's unique about the Mario Kart ride is that they can actually update the augmented reality system overnight and car by car without having to, you know, shut down the ride for a long time. The question I had and wrote down was, will this improve Mario Kart by adding the ability to do occlusion? If you're riding the Mario Kart ride in the second row, you may have the heads of the riders in front of you blocking your view, but in the augmented reality headset, those heads don't block the view of the virtual characters around you. They actually appear like the other cars driving in, in your augmented reality appear on top of those people's heads. So we want to fix that. It seems to be that this is more about the 3D ability between multiple virtual objects and not interacting with real life. Laterally shift each virtual object displayed by an augmented reality headset by a respective distance as the respective virtual object is displayed to change virtual depth from a first virtual depth to a second virtual depth. It's so cute. Figure one is a respective diagram of a user wearing an augmented reality headset. Figure two is an augmented reality headset from the perspective of the user. Figure three is a block diagram of an augmented reality system that incorporates the augmented reality headset. And figure four, neato, schematic plan view of a user viewing a virtual object through the augmented reality headset. In the real world, when a person views an object directly in front of them, the person simultaneously moves their eyes in opposite directions towards one another such that the gazes of each eye converges on the object or the pupil of each eye is in line with an object, a process referred to as vergence, and changes the optical power of their eyes to maintain a clear image of or focus on the object, a process referred to as accommodation. So going through it, it appears that this patent is mainly for keeping virtual objects clear, but also remaining realistically at the correct distance. Uh, it, it's trying really hard to not make all the augmented reality images feel flat and just on top of reality, but mixed in, mixed in with reality by using the way the human eye focuses on things that are near or far. I feel like Rover right now. Near? far. Uh, but it has nothing to do with occlusion. So we got our answer. It's definitely in, in, it's a patented piece of small little piece of technology to make things look farther or closer together while still remaining crystal clear. It reminds me of 3D movies where things, when they get really close, tend to blur if I don't focus my eyes and I have to consciously focus my eyes in a certain way. Like Donald's reaching out to you at Magic, and everyone's trying to grasp his hand and I'm like sitting here going... Does Donald blurry to anyone else or is that just me? And it's because I'm not focusing on the correct thing. Maybe this is better at reading what you're focusing on or focusing it more naturally like the human eye. So we're moving on to the next one. It's not occlusion. Okay. And the next one is segmented bending system for an amusement park attraction. And my notes say, neat, a dragon. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Not really a question past me, but okay. This one was pointed out by Tommy. Uh, check out our last video for Tommy talking about drainage permits for Epic Universe. Very interesting stuff. This one is about a segmented bending system, including multiple linkages coupled to one another in a stacked arrangement. So I mainly just want to see what it has to say in regards to dragons, because I find that interesting. Now, of course, dragons like this little picture show up in patents all the time as representatives of just random characters. This could be a character. This ostrich could be a character. Uh, uh, no ostrich here. It's just a dragon. 
But Tommy said they actually mentioned the word dragon. So let's let's look for dragon. Okay, right here at the beginning. An amusement park may include various attractions that provide enjoyment to guests. Whoa, it's really going to the beginning. For example, the amusement park may include a ride attraction in which a ride vehicle carries one or more guests along a path that passes one or more animated figures, like this picture here. Example, a figure with one or more actuators that can be controlled to move figure components. Animated figures may include robotic assemblies that can be themed to look like living creatures. For example, an assembly for one or more actuators that are themed to look like a dragon. It just says it right there, the theme to look like a dragon. In the detailed description, it says the present disclosure relates generally to a bending system that includes multiple segments that operate to cumulatively provide a bending effect. Example, a curling effect. For example, the bending system may include the multiple segments that operate to provide the bending effect of a portion of an animated figure, for example, a finger of a robot or the tail of a dragon within an attraction of amusement park. There we go how this could be built with these vertebrae and the mechanical part here at the bottom and it would all work together to curl like a dragon. <laughs> in one implementation, the bending system may be used in a body part of an animated figure, example, tail of a dragon, so as to bend or to curl the body part of the animated figure. It may be covered by a covering, example, cloth, fabric, plastic, which may hide segments of the bending system from view or provide a desirable outward appearance. And going through, it does appear to just talk about over and over again how this segmented bending system would work and that it can be used for the tail of a dragon. So if we ever see some kind of themed land with dragons, um, see if it has any bendy tails. And lastly, the last one I want to look at is called Smooth Faceted Screen Systems and Method. Leave it to Universal to invent a new type of screens. Um, this one, my only question was, what? Question mark? That's it. That's all I wrote down. What? <laughs> oh, because, because, like, look at it. Like, what? Using curved display screens provides an immersive viewing experience, wide viewing angle, increased depth, contrast, and the like. Yet curved display screens typically have difficulties in manufacturing, storage, and wiring, to name a few. Faceted screens that approximate a curve, example, a regular curve, a compound curve, a curved portion of an irregular shape, by joining flat surfaces at an angle are easier to work with. Turning to the drawings, figure one is a perspective view of a dome ride system. Having a faceted display screen implemented as a dome with individual facets formed from display panels of the dome. Directing light such as an increase in brightness is observed at the common location may lessen the visual impact of seams. Oh, so if you get the light of the screens pointed right in their eyes, they won't see the seams. It actually reminds me of lots of gags on uh, Disney rides lately where they have um, like the, the bright white lights shining your face when Kylo Ren is coming at you with a lightsaber on Rise of the Resistance. It's like, if we shine lights in their face, they won't see this is a screen. So it's, it's interesting that instead of like projections, this could be a gigantic LED dome that, you know, these ride view, these people on a ride are just like passing through just... Don't mind me just passing through a dome. But instead of projections, this is talking about maybe something with pixels like LED. It's like entering, entering the volume from Mandalorian as a, oh, that actually would be pretty cool if you entered a, a giant. Because it could move the perspective with the ride vehicle and actually look endless. Oh, look at that. Going into it deeper. It does mention LEDs by name. I don't know when or how a giant dome screen could be used at a universal attraction or if it's something for Epic Universe or something they patented but didn't actually use. But it is interesting nonetheless uh, that I, I feel like we are so close to seeing LEDs be utilized in theme park attractions. 
but not in like a giant flat LED wall in something like this or like the volume from the filming of Mandalorian. I think that makes a lot more sense because it creates its own light source. Something like the Born Stuntacular versus uh, projected media like T2. That's going to do it for this episode of Digging Documents. Uh, kind of hodgepodge of different ride stuff, but I think next time maybe we'll get deeper into what could be an elevator ride for British Ministry of Magic. Right. I mean, at least that's what the patent looks like, but I think we can really delve deep into it and see what exactly it's uh, proposing. But that'll be next time. Bye, y'all.